Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. Now I'm back with another buy request video. Please don't let these get out of hand and send me a ton of requests. I, I typically, I have a lot of videos to do and don't typically do the buy request stuff. But this question has come up so many times I thought I would do a video on it. And that question is, how do I use FSUIPC? In particular, how do I use FSUIPC for binding my controls? So I'm going to show you how I use it and why I love it. Now, FSUIPC, there are two versions. There is a free one that comes with a number of add-on aircraft. There is a paid version as well. Get the paid one. Um, what FSUIPC does is it provides an interface that programmers can connect to to control the simulator, but also an interface you can connect to if you have the um, paid one that gives you a lot of options for controlling things like your controls. So here we are in a little Piper Cub. Now I'm not in recording mode, so you'll notice a lot of jaggy lines. Ignore that. That's not how the sim normally looks, you know, for me anyway. First thing you need to do if you're going to use FSUIPC for control binding is go to options, go to settings, go to controls. Now in here, you would typically click this button off. So you turn off controllers in FSX, which doesn't make any sense at all, but trust me, it's the right thing to do. The exception is aircraft like the PMDG aircraft. The PMDG aircraft like the 737, the 777, they like to at least have the throttles working in here. So if you're using those aircraft, then enable controllers, but the only axis you'll set up on the control axis button at the top here is your throttles. I'm gonna turn these off for this little Piper Cub. You'll see why. <clears throat> Next, go to the add-ons menu, choose FSUIPC. It blanks your sim out and you see this. So I need to actually fuzz out certain stuff here so you can't see my email address, but um, this is the registered version of FSUIPC. It has a number of things that you can use or that you can make use of to tweak your SIM. So if I want to hide single line messages, for example, which pop up across the top of the screen from time to time, I just click on that and they're all hidden. If I want to hide the multi-line stuff that pops up and takes up the top corner of the screen, I can click on that and get rid of that. Don't worry about it too much. Let's go through some of these options. Miscellaneous all sorts of lovely stuff in here. I can say, keep my flight sim clock synced. Great, that's kind of useful. Sometimes you'll have a, 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 an add-on aircraft where the clocks get a little bit out of sync for no reason, especially the older aircraft. Turn that on, that fixes that bug. If you have an aircraft that drains its battery in no time flat, the B-17 is a good example of that, then you can say, extend the battery life. And you can put in a number here to say how much to extend it by or put in zero, which means the battery never drains. If you want to do that, you can do that. Lots of options, play with them at your leisure. Winds, this is a good one if you have S turns with Active Sky and stuff like that. You can smooth wind changes, you can um, allow gusts or turn them off, you can do all sorts of stuff to the wind here to basically fix the weather and the wind handling within FSX. The stuff you're most interested in though is this stuff. Buttons and switches, key presses, axes, joystick. Let's go buttons and switches. This is why I love FSUIPC. I fly so many different aircraft and I have so many different control configurations like joysticks and yokes and all sorts of stuff. It's actually very, very hard for me to get prior to FSUIPC, get a decent set of bindings. With FSUIPC, my bindings are automatically set by aircraft. The way I do that, click on profile specific here. It says, what do you want to do? What kind of profile do you want to set up here? So I'm going to say a new profile. And this is for the A2A Piper Cub. Great. Now I can run through all the buttons on my joystick. I've got a simple Thrustmaster T16000 plugged in. And I can just click on stuff. And you'll see you know, the indications change as to which buttons I'm pressing. And it's all very lovely. So let's say I want this particular button here to be flaps down. The way I do that is I say select for FS control. Now you have a ton of stuff exposed to you here, more than you normally get with FSX's own control setup. So I want flaps increase. So let's go down here and find flaps. Uh, where are you flaps? Flaps increase there. I want this button to be flaps up. So that'll be flaps decrease. So we'll go and find that. Dun, 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 dun. You can just type in here, but my keyboard's kind of out of reach right now. Flaps decrease. So now I can test them. That should be flaps increase. That's flaps decrease. Excellent. Now, let's say I want to use the point of view hat for trimming. So when I press it forward, I want that to be elevator trimmed down. So I'm going to move the hat up. I'm going to choose FS control. I'm going to find elevator trim down or elev trim down. I think it is. Here it is. I'm going to say repeat, which means as long as I hold the hat on my joystick forward, the trim down command is being sent to the sim, which is fabulous. Let's go and do that again. So pulling back on the hat is going to be elevated trim up. I found my keyboard. L-E-V trim. There it is. Up. 
and make that repeat. Let's say I want a button to cycle through the views, so the A key and Shift A to go forwards and backwards through the views. I can press a button on the joystick, like so, and now instead of saying FS control, I can simply say select for key press. The reason I do that is I use Easy Dock. So I have keys which Easy Dock picks up as opposed to the sim picking up. So set, press a key on my keyboard, there it is. Let's do the reverse now, so this is gonna be Shift A, very, very, very simple and straightforward. Now, every time I load the Piper Cub and I have this joystick plugged in, these are the button bindings I'm getting set automatically. I don't have to go and mess with any options. They just work. Now, the same thing happens for axes. Let's go over here to axes. So I've got a number of axes here. Let's go ahead and set the yoke up. So that one, it's already saying elevator. You've got three options here. Send it to FSUIPC, send it to FS, Flight Simulator, or send as an offset. I never use the offset. I always use send to FS UIPC calibration or send to FS as a normal access. In fact, most of the time I send it to FS UIPC. You will see why, but first click on profile specific. If you have general bindings already set up, it asks you, do you want to assign the general stuff? No. In this case, do you want to save the changes so far? Yes. Okay. Rescan. Move my joystick forward. Okay, it doesn't know what this is. So click it, click that. Drop this down. This is my elevator. Let's do a rescan to make sure it says elevator, which it does. Let's do the ailerons. Rescan. Move the joystick. We're going to choose in here ailerons. Let's set up my rudder. Whoops. Rescan. Twist it because it's a cheapy, twisty joystick. FSU IPC. Set in here. Rudder. Now, this joystick actually has a throttle as well. So let's go and set that up. Move it. There's the slider moving. Send to FSU IPC, select it, drop that down. This would be throttle. Done. Now go to calibration. Again, profile specific. So you can set up your calibration of your controls per aircraft. This is why you might want to do that. So currently it says it is picking up the ailerons, and you can see the numbers changing, and the elevator directly. It's not treating them as an FSX axis. FSUIPC is picking them up and then sending the data to the sim, which is what I want because I can say filter. So if I have a spiky joystick, it will smooth out the input. So instead of it suddenly spiking from zero to full, it will smooth that out. In addition, though, I can go in here. Let's look at the uh, ailerons and I can put a slope in here. Look. So I can say now that my joystick is less sensitive earlier on, you know, in, in, in the middle in its centered range and more sensitive to the outside range. So I can completely tweak how the aircraft feels in response to my inputs. I did this for the A2A172 video. I used response curves to turn, tone down the sensitivity of that aircraft. Very cool. So ailerons, elevator, rudder, throttle. Look at throttle here. You need to go through, in fact, look at all of these. You need to go through all of these now and go through the full ranges. So move your joystick through the full range and do these set buttons. So set, set, set. So you're letting FSUIPC know the full range of all your controls. That was my ailerons, let's do my elevator. So notice that the maximum deflection backwards I have on my elevator is that, not that. So set, set, set. Let's do the same for my rudder. Twist it to one side, set, set, set. Zero is the center. It was off a little bit there. And let's do my throttle. Set and set. Wonderful stuff. If you have back to front um, axes, you can reverse them right here. There are a lot of pages here, by the way. If you have multiple controls, like multiple um, inputs for throttle one, throttle two, throttle three, prop pitch one, two, three, and so on, you can tune them all through these separate pages. Now, I don't have a prop pitch control currently. So I'm gonna say reset, same for mixture, same for brakes, they're all turned off. On the throttles here, typically you would, on a more complex aircraft, like a jet, you would say set. You'd move the range, notice up here you've got a no reverse zone. If you turn that on, you lose the middle button, so it treats the throttle as zero to full. If you turn that off, it treats the throttle as reverse to zero to full. That's what these three buttons are here. So again, you're just going to go through moving the range of your control, set full reverse, set zero thrust, set full thrust. It is as simple as that. Nothing to it, and so on, and so on, and so on. That's really all there is to it. 
And now anytime I load up this Piper Cub with this joystick, let's reset that, it knows how I have all my controls set up. FSU IPC. Let's go into the cockpit and just make sure. Um, let's grab something here that lets me change my view. So I set up my ailerons. Yep, they're all working. I actually put a slope on them. Look, that's quite a lot of deflection on the joystick, but not a lot of deflection on the on the actual in-sim control. Until I move a bit more, then it speeds up. There's my elevator. That's all good. There's my rudder pedal. Twisting the joystick, and here's the throttle. That's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. Hope this was useful, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.